Uh, as Linda said, I work mainly at the Soil Association, uh, where I um, head up the horticultural and agroforestry work. I'm also managing uh, an agroforestry project near Swindon, um, at Helen Browning's farm. So we're planting up about 200 acres of agroforestry um, in a range of sort of different systems. Um, and I do a little bit of uh, writing and private consultancy. So I keep myself fairly busy. But wood chip is what I'm obsessed about at the moment, as, uh, as we've talked about. So if we start right at the beginning, um, where does wood chip come from? Well, it comes from wood, obviously, uh, but wood chip is kind of relatively recent uh, as, a, so as a material. The, the wood chipper was not invented until 1884 by a chap called Peter Jensen uh, in, in Germany. And it was invented to deal with the chipping, the, the wood from prunings from uh, the parks in the, in the town. So it was, it was an answer to a problem really, rather than something that, uh, that he thought of just, uh, uh, what's the word, uh, abstractly, you know, sort of in itself. And, and any part of the tree, of a tree can be chipped or shredded if you have a big enough machine. Uh, so most of us, if we've got a shredder or a chipper in our gardens, it will be quite small uh, and probably won't deal with anything more than <clears throat> the thickness of a, a thumb, but uh, there are chippers that will deal with entire large trees and you just sort of drop them in the top and they spew out piles of wood chip. Um, and uh, even if you don't have a chipper, you can create wood chipping with secateurs or by bashing it with a sledgehammer or something. Uh, it takes quite a long time to create anything. Uh, so except for the smallest amounts, I wouldn't recommend it. But what it is worth doing, um, is I think anyway, is getting together with friends and hiring a chipper. So if you've got even a little bit of space to store your prunings for a little bit, the basically the bigger the chipper, the less time you have to spend feeding into it and uh, faffing about. Uh, and the, the often the sort of the cleaner the chip is as well. So it is, if, you're sort of, if you're thinking of dealing with your own material, then the bigger the machine you can get, the easier the job is. Um, but it's all a, a question of cost. And if you're buying a machine, get anything that's, that's at all powerful for bigger stuff, you have to spend quite a lot of money uh, and it's much cheaper to hire it. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna talk about various properties and things that you can use wood chip for. The most uh, well understood already is, is mulches. I'm guessing everybody sort of thinks probably of mulch when they think of wood chip and probably have tended to think of it as something for paths or possibly for shrubs and, and trees. And it is certainly very useful for that. And I'm gonna cover a few of the reasons why it's so useful for that. So we're gonna look at weeds, water, temperature, uh, preventing splash and protecting the soil surface of the soil. And then we're gonna look a little bit at pest and disease control. And some of that is really quite interesting and surprised me when I started uh, understanding a bit more about it. So there's a number of reasons why a mulch works against weed. The most obvious is that it just cuts out light um, and so stops plants growing because they can't get any light. With wood chip, there's also some other things that are happening there. So particularly if you're using fresh wood chip, and by fresh wood chip, I mean wood chip that hasn't been composted, uh, and particularly if it's from older wood, you end up with uh, quite large chunks of wood on the surface of the soil. And when a weed seeds land on that surface, it's pretty inhospitable. Uh, it's dry, it, there's nothing for them to germinate onto or, or get their roots into. So most weed seeds won't like germinating on wood chip. As it rots down, of course, it becomes a bit more like compost and then it becomes a lot more attractive and becomes an almost perfect seed bed. So the effectiveness of a mulch against annual weeds, certainly, or against weeds that are blowing in, uh, becomes less effective as time goes on. So, so topping it up occasionally uh, can be quite useful. The other thing that's happening, uh, particularly on fresh wood, is a lot of trees contain chemicals that have allopathic properties. So that's where there's an antagonistic 
uh, effect on something that touches it. So uh, walnut, for instance, contains a substance called juglone, which has been shown to inhibit germination and growth in other species. So by mulching an established tree with that, you're helping to prevent other plants from growing well nearby. However, uh, it does only last for three to six months, that effect. Those chemicals break down relatively quickly. Uh, so, which is a good thing if you're worried about the effect they might have, uh, but not such a good thing if you're hoping they're gonna control your weed. <clears throat> and the, the mulch really needs to be at least 10 centimeters deep, uh, probably 15 at least, to be effective against weed control. And I will just add a little bit of a note about perennial weeds, um, which are obviously a right old problem. And wood chip probably won't help very much, I'm sorry to say, uh, because most perennial weeds have the strength to push up through the mulch. Uh, and once they've pushed up through the mulch, they've got this lovely clean bed to grow them with no competition from all of those other pesky annuals that they might have been having to fight against. Um, and so here you can see this was a mulch we put down around some trees, the eating thistle is poking its way up and we quite quickly ended up with uh, a nice row of creeping thistle flowering and seeding, which on the one hand is lovely for the goldfinches, but on the other hand we did lose quite an area uh, of ground to it. So it's, don't expect them to keep all of your perennial weeds under control. You can mitigate it a, a bit on a garden scale by putting cardboard down first and then the wood chip on top uh, or some thick layers of um, uh, newspaper that will help to, to slow it down. But most of the perennial weeds will probably, if you've got a bad problem, will push their way up through. Having said that, it is easier to weed them out from a wood chip mulch than from a, you know, an unmulched surface. So it will have some, some benefit. So this picture <clears throat> demonstrates one of my eureka moments with wood chip. So this, uh, a lot of my photos are farm, are on the farm where I work and sort of farm scale, but all of the principles are equally applicable in the garden. So don't be sort of put off by the fact that it's a big row of stuff. The plants, the trees in this picture, you can see some on the left that are quite small and some on the right that are very big. All of these trees were planted on the same day. Uh, in the autumn stroke winter of 2017-18, which was a really dry year here in the UK. The, we, we just pollarded a whole load of willow by the tree and we dumped the wood chip over the fence in a big pile here. Uh, and I had every intention of going in and moving it and spreading it around and mulching a few trees properly and never got round to it. So these trees on the right had a mulch of about three feet deep um, of wood chip. And the ones on the left had a little, uh, probably only five centimeters um, of sprinkling around them. The ones on the left, this picture was taken last year, but the ones on the left are now up to about my chest height. And the ones on the right are probably 12, 14 feet tall. Uh, and my belief is that most of it is down to water retention. Um, there might be some other stuff going on, but particularly Willow likes it wet and it was a really dry year. Uh, and so I think most of it is to do with the fact that the ground didn't dry up and they could just keep growing. There are some other species, some alder and some hawthorn and some maple that have also done well, but not quite as striking as the Willow. So that was quite powerful and made me really kind of made me think a lot. And the the studies that I've looked at in terms of water show that, uh, again, a 10 to 15 centimetre layer of wood chip mulch will uh, reduce your irrigation needs by about 25% or increase the moisture levels in the soil by about 25%. So it, it is significant. And, and you know, that will vary, obviously, from, from year to year and, and depend on your soil type as well. The other thing which I hadn't really thought about until I started getting into this is the mo temperature modulation effect that mulch has. So most uh, plants and indeed most soil organisms don't like extremes of temperature um, unless they're specifically adapted to it. Uh, so most soil organisms uh, are most active at around 25 to 
30 degrees centigrade or 75 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Fungi cope a bit better with cold and bacteria cope a bit better with heat. But broadly speaking, most of them like it in that medium temperature range. When you put a, a mulch, a wood chip mulch on, it heats up slower when it's hot. So it's protecting those organisms in hot weather. And it will also keep it warmer in the winter, anything up to 10 degrees warmer with a layer of mulch on. So you're really protecting uh, the soil and the plant roots from, from those extremes. So we all know that the mulch will protect the surface of the soil. And again, that's why we put it on paths so that we don't get muddy and, um, you know, tramp mud all through the place. Um, and it definitely does that. Uh, we even use it where we're, we're putting small tractors through and it will help, but certainly where we're walking, it's a really good way of keeping the garden clean. The other thing that happens on bare soil when it rains, and particularly when you get really heavy, big raindrops, is you get a lot of mud splash. And I'm sure you've all seen that around plants. The, the problem with that is it's not only splashing mud onto the plant, it's also splashing disease spores. And it's splashing disease spores and then it's holding them in this sort of wet, muddy material around the base of the plants. And that's a perfect breeding ground for fungal diseases. Um, using a mulch basically stops that splash, or if it does splash up, it's clean water splashing back up from the wood chip. Uh, and a study in the States with box hedging, which is, as I'm sure a lot of you know, is really prone to box blight, it showed a 97% decrease in disease when they used the mulch. So it pretty much eliminated the disease. Um, and I know a lot of, uh, this obviously won't be any of you lot, but there were <laughs> there are chemicals that are used in some gardens to control it, and it basically eliminated the use, you know, the need to use any of that. But certainly for, for organic and biodynamic growers, it basically it's the solution to box blight that you might not have had otherwise. Um, and the as the um, wood chip rots and is incorporated into the soil, it will improve the drainage and aeration of the soil. So it can actually can help repair compaction and damage to soil, but it's best used as a preventative. And again, this is something that I hadn't really considered until I started investigating this little chap that's quite cute, doesn't he, munching away on his worm. Um, but when you're planting trees, voles are a real issue and we're planting a lot of trees and almost immediately after planting them, we got a lot of voles. And we've tried quite a lot of different ways of controlling weeds around trees because you do need to control weeds or they compete as the young trees grow. So we looked for mulch mats and we tried hessian mulch mats and we even had a few with the plastic backing on that I ordered by mistake. Uh, when you put that around a tree, it creates a lovely dry little home for a vole and the vole sits under there quite happy munching away at your tree roots. If you mulch with a uh, wood chip or compost on top of that mulch mat, it's insulating the vole's house for it and it makes it even happier. Uh, and, and you lose even more trees. Uh, what we found is by putting the wood chip directly onto the soil rather than uh, the mulch mat, it seemed to fall into the runs of the voles and they just didn't like it very much. So we've had almost no vole damage where we put uh, wood chip directly onto the grass or the soil around the tree. Um, I don't know the exact mechanism. My guess is that they just they don't like it as much or maybe it keeps, you know, allows birds of prey to come in where they wouldn't under a plastic mulch. But for whatever reason, uh, it seems to have stopped damage from voles around our trees. The other uh, thing I've looked at, we, this is partly through an innovative farmers um, field lab. It's a project that we run at the Soil Association around uh, farmer learning and research. And we did, there's a chap called Glyn Percival, who's a tree scientist, works with uh, mainly parkland trees in, in London. And, and cities, but he was doing some research on single species wood chip. And this is an area that is, needs a lot more research, I think. But he noticed in one of his trials that the apple trees that had the willow wood chip seemed to have less scab. 
so we did a trial with him and a whole load of cider growers in the southwest trying to see if we could replicate that in in orchards the the mechanism seems to be that willow contains salicylic acid as i'm sure most of you know which is which is aspirin basically but that as that salicylic acid seems to stimulate an immune reaction in trees against disease um, so the idea is you cut the willow in february when the sap is rising and it has the highest level of the acid in its branches you chip it and apply it within a week or two uh, around the apple tree as a mulch and basically the thicker you can put it on the better um, and there's also different willow species have different levels of salicylic acid in it <laughs> quite significant differences um, and uh, I can share there's a there's a table in the book but I, there's also it's available uh, if you go to the innovative farmers website so get if you get the right willow variety and you chip it quickly get it on as a mulch then as that salicylic acid leaches out of the wood chip it's taken up by the plant and it boosts its immune, its immune system. That's the theory. And we saw a trend in the orchards to that as well. It wasn't quite significant. Um, partly he thinks because they weren't putting enough chip down and partly because they might have been using the wrong variety, but we saw a trend. And, and I suspect that most species of tree have something in them that would have an effect of some sort you know these trials haven't been done but every tree is different we've got the walnut with its jugloni we've got willow with salicylic acid um <clears throat> you know there's i imagine every tree has something in it that could be used in one way or another if we knew how to do it there's there's also a physical potential within it so there's a study that came from an amazing uh, researcher in, in america that i've drawn on quite a lot for the book a chap called david granitstein looking at um coddling moth which is a big pest in apples uh, what they found is that wood chip mulch is a really good uh, hiding place for the coddling moth and initially you think oh crikey that's going to make it worse isn't it but what they did for the commercial orchard is they then sprayed it with biological control so they sprayed the wood chip with the biological control which then really increased the efficacy of it against the coddling moth but another way you could do it potentially is you could then uh, pull the wood chip off uh, just at the right time before the pupas went back up into the tree and you could either put it in the compost heap or spread it around somewhere else. So I think there's, there's ways of um, interrupting pest cycles by using a mulch that could be, could be a really good way of reducing disease without chemicals. Lots to learn on this, I would say. One of the things I saw when I was, when I was reading up about this particularly from vermicomp vermicom composters was don't put wood chip in with your worms they don't like it uh, and i've not really found this to be true so this picture as you can see there's lots of quite fresh wood chip still in here it's not very well composted yet and this is from a pile that was on a concrete pad so it wasn't even on the soil and already the worms were coming in um, and quite happy in there it's moist as you can see um, so in, in the bits of the wood chip pile that had heated up, there weren't so many, but around the edges where it was a bit damper, they loved it. The, again, one of the other turning points for me um, with wood chip was I went to a grower called Ian Tolhurst, who some of you may have heard of in Berkshire, amazing um, vegan organic grower. Uh, and he's been doing quite a lot with wood chip for 10, 12 years. And he took me to one field where he'd been spreading composted wood chip onto the soil as a soil improver the sort of health booster and we couldn't find a bit of the soil that wasn't a worm cast it was just covered in it um, and and that kind of blew my mind really because he's not on the best of soils he's on grade three soil which is not you know it's not prime growing land but the health of his soil and the, the worm populations were just extraordinary and he's done some calculations about how many tons of earthworms per acre he's got and it's and it's extraordinary and it you know significantly outweighs darwin's estimates from uh, from his book on with on, on earthworms of course we all know why worms are so good i don't need to go into that uh so linda mentioned fungi earlier and fungi are a big part of the story when it comes to wood chip and why they're good um so bacteria struggle to break down wood chip but they they're not really strong enough to get through the the thicker 
cell walls uh, that are in wood. And they also need higher levels of nitrogen to operate, um, which obviously a lot of wood chip doesn't have. It's, it's very low in nitrogen. Whereas fungi can function on much lower levels of nitrogen and they're, they're stronger, they're better able to break down cell walls. Which is why even, you know, even very old um, dry wood chip uh, will eventually rot down and, and get infected by fungus, uh, even, even without any additional nitrogen. There is some risk of nitrogen robbing because of this. So, so fungi will sort of take a little bit of nitrogen from their surroundings to help them rot down the wood. It's one of the things that uh, I think it's a little bit of a myth that you can't use wood chip because of the nitrogen robbing. There, in most situations, I would say it's not that big a problem. There's just a couple of uh, olden rules, I guess, in terms of, of avoiding it. One is never dig in uncomposted wood chip. That's when you cause the problem. So if you imagine um, when wood chips sitting on the surface, it only robs nitrogen from, you know, the little bit of the soil that it's touching down to about maybe one centimetre. Uh, so if it's all sitting on the surface, you've only got a very thin layer of soil that's been affected. As soon as you dig it in, then effectively it's covering a whole load of the soil and it's sucking nitrogen from all around that. So, so mostly, as long as you're just putting it on as a mulch, um, even uncomposted wood chips shouldn't cause a massive problem. I have seen occasional problems with very shallow rooting plants. So on raspberries, for instance, where they're sending those runners out just below the surface, um, putting uncomposted wood chip onto that might cause you some problems. Uh, if you're worried, just compost it first, because as soon as you compost it, you're already starting that breakdown process and some of the nitrogen that's been sucked up initially will start to be released. So it's, it's not a huge problem. The other big thing to avoid is um, sawdust. Uh, so again, because it comes tends to come from very seasoned, very dry wood, um, and it's got a massive relative surface area, that's the worst for, for sucking up nitrogen. Uh, but again, you can put it in your compost heap, add a, something with more nitrogen to it, um, and it will break down. So it's not it's got no use. It's just you've got to be a bit careful about using it. And as you add wood chip to your soil and, and all of that fungi is also being added to the soil, you're building up the fungi in your soil and you're starting to shift this uh, bacterial fungi ratio that some of you may have come across this idea that as soils develop and age, they start when they're young um, as very bacterial dominated substance. So if you imagine a volcanic island erupts and you've got lava, the first thing to come on and colonize that lava is bacteria mostly and then as it starts to break down the rock you get a very thin deposition of organic matter and then small plants come in and those small plants favor bacterial soil as the plants get bigger so eventually sort of woodier plants and shrubs and trees come in the soil gets older and deeper and it becomes more fungal and a lot of our plants obviously particularly shrubs and trees like a much more fungal soil and the more we dig uh, you know, every time we dig our soil, we're killing fungi. Fung fungi hate being disturbed. Um, so in most gardens, we'll, we could do with uh, increasing that fungal ratio a little bit, and wood chip is a great way of doing that. And fungi is also an amazing carbon sequestrator. Um, it can sequester as much carbon as the tree that's planted. Um, so often by planting, particularly in a in a situation that hasn't had any trees before. When you plant a tree, you're, you're obviously sequestering the carbon that's in the tree and the roots, but you're also uh, sequestering almost as much in the associated fungi. Um, so they're just uh, amazing things. And again, we know really very little about them relatively. Composting wood chip is really simple, much easier than, than composting uh, green stuff. Um, it might take longer, um, but you can pretty much leave it. Uh, you can leave it, literally just leave it in a pile or in a bag or in a compost heap. I would say don't turn it too often. Uh, you might want to turn it occasionally, um, but, but certainly only once or twice a year, but, but you don't need to mostly. It will break down on itself. And again, because it's mostly fungi that's breaking it down, if you turn it, you're breaking up those fungal hyphae. And actually the fungi will find their way all around it anyway. 
So mostly I would say you don't need to worry. This picture is uh, Ian Tolhurst's wood chip pile. Um, so he gets wood chip from a local tree surgeon. He adds in, you can see that green bit in the middle, he adds in his waste from his um, pack house and his vegetable garden where there is. Um, so, you know, this is effectively the same as you might have in your own garden, but just on a larger scale. And he turns it really just to mix up the materials because it, it comes in quite different. I do, you can see there, that looks like a Leylandii hedge, I think, actually, that bottom bit that's been cut, whereas this is obviously sort of slightly woodier. So he turns it a couple of times just to mix the materials up. Uh, and that's it. And he just literally leaves it. And then um, for the propagation compost, Oh, hang on, I've got them slightly out of order. Where's my propagation compost? Here? There. Uh, so that is looking at it from the other end. And he then covers that bit at the top left under the tarpaulin. He covers for another six months to make propagation compost, which we'll come to in a later slide. But effectively, if you want to compost for mulching or for doing a no bait system, no dig system, then six uh, to 12 months should be, should be fine. If you want to make a propagation compost out of it, it needs a little bit longer. It's pretty easy. You can do it in a slightly more um, controlled way. Uh, and one of the ways you can do that is using this Johnson Sioux bioreactor. So this is a couple that have developed the system uh, in the States. This is, I was trying to find a, a small garden version of this, but I couldn't find an image that didn't have copyright attached. <laughs> so this one is a trailer version from a, um, called Ben Taylor Johnson but effectively what you do is you you create a, a permanent system so you're, you're not moving it at all and rather than turning it to get the air into it you uh, you have channels permanent channels within the wood chip which allow that aeration so what he's done here he's got a whole load of plastic pipes and in a in a garden situation you might just have uh, four or five of them you pack the wood chip in around those pipes really tightly. Um, and if in, we mostly in this country don't need to water our wood chip piles. Um, in drier uh, climates, they, they irrigate them to keep them moist. But in, in our climate, and mostly there's plenty of moisture in the air to rot it. So you pack it in really tightly and then you pull those um, plastic pipes out and it leaves a channel of air in the middle so there's plenty of air getting into the heat and, it, and then you leave it again uh, and eventually it rots down. The advantage of doing it like that is that you get a much more diverse uh, number of organisms it seems. So the studies that they've done show a uh, significantly wider range of organisms within the, within the compost which if you're then trying to stimulate biological activity in your garden you're sort of introducing this bigger range and supporting a bigger range. So that's, that's the advantage of it. Um, and the temperature, you, you can also, you can control the temperature of the heat, uh, of the heat by blowing air through those channels if you want. Um, you can get really geeky about it um, if you're interested. But for most people, I suspect, just leaving it in a heap and waiting for it rot to rot down is probably gonna be the simplest. This is a, an even bigger version. This is kind of uh, slightly mad, really, and uh, I'm sure you will all be quite shocked, really. But this is a big field of conventional maize, uh, again, in the States. Uh, they've got a problem with nitrogen leaching, I would say, not surprisingly. Uh, and the way they've chosen to deal with it is to get a big pit in the corner of the field and fill it with wood chip to filter the water coming off the field and it absorbs the nitrates um, preventing pollution into the stream you know arguably there are other ways of uh, reducing that nitrate leaching but the point really in a way is that you can use this ability of wood chip to suck up nitrogen to your advantage um, so i don't know some of you may keep your own chickens for instance um, wood chip is a really good animal bedding uh, it absorbs the soluble nitrates from manure and uh, bedding and and it captures it enabling you to then use it and then when you add that manure to the soil there are studies showing that you get less leaching when the beddings come from wood chip than when it's come from straw for instance uh, so it's a really useful property and there's, there are even some conventional farmers that are adding 
uh, artificial nitrogen to wood chip to, to reduce runoff. Um, but, it, but you know, it works really well with manure. We're mixing our organic manure half and half with wood chip uh, as well as a way of kind of boosting the health but, but reducing the risk of leaching. It's, it's a great material for that. So this is something again that surprises, I think a lot of people that you can make your own propagation compost from wood chip. And again, quite simply, um, the, you would imagine that you might need something more sterile or that it might be some problems with nutrients, but actually it seems wood chip is really easy to make propagation wood chip. Um, we did a, uh, another innovative field, farmer's field lab with this, where we, uh, Ian Tolhurst again, and he propagated cabbage and leek seeds. Um, these actually are some of his strawberries. Uh, we trialed it against the leading peat based propagation compost and there was no difference in quality of plants coming out of the two and this is basically just from wood chip that's been left to rot down for 18 months and then sieved um, and he does he, we also tried adding a bit of biochar in there um, and that didn't seem to make that much of a difference one way or the other but so so it's, it is <clears throat> potentially a really good way of replacing peat in horticulture uh, or of uh, you know, making your own your own compost, and that one at the bottom right is uh, some squash growing in. So even while it's rotting down, you can grow stuff in it. You can grow mushrooms, but you can also grow some plants, um, and certainly things like potatoes and uh, and squash will grow quite well just in the wood chip pile. So some of you may know Fred. He's an amazing biodynamic grower um, near Tetbury. Um, and he's developed this technique of capturing the heat or harnessing the heat from the wood chip as it rots down. So he's built, this is I think two pallets by one pallet, um, and he just fills it with fresh ramial wood chip, and I'll come on to ramial wood chip, but it's the young wood chip, so from small branches. Uh, so he fills it with that. He puts a piece of aspect on top, and all that does is that just shields his seedlings from the heat of the wood chip because it can get quite hot. Um, and he does all of his propagation uh, on top of that. He doesn't use any electric heating for it and it stays warm for uh, three months or so. What he's found, so the, I mean, this obviously is quite an old technique. The Romans, I think, were using it and certainly the Victorians were using it to grow pineapples and things. But what, what he's discovered with the wood chip is that the heat is more even. Than, than a manure hotbed and it seems to last for longer as well so you get a longer more even heat which obviously for propagation is is great so i mentioned rainmill chipped wood or rainmill wood chip uh, anything that comes from wood that is less than seven centimeters in diameter so branches less than seven centimeters in diameter it's called ramial chipped wood and it has a much higher, relatively higher proportion of nutrients, uh, including nitrogen in it, because it's got all the living bits or a much higher proportion of the living bit and the bark and the leaves. To the point where it seems you can just spread it on the soil um, without causing any nutrient problems. So uh, I was involved with the Organic Research Centre on the Project they did on this and this is a picture from that so you can see this is them spreading it on uh i think ian tolhurst's um i know this is actually at wakelands this one uh in one of their trial sites so they're spreading it on the grass they'll allow that to rot down a bit and then incorporate it uh, but even where it was spread directly onto bare soil before an arable crop uh, it didn't show any adverse effect there's not that much study being done on it. There was a big study in Canada in the 80s and then the, this Organic Research Centre trial a couple of years ago. Um, so there's more work needs to be done. But the, the advantage of it, I guess, is that you don't need to take it away and compost it. So it saves a lot of hassle. And certainly a lot of the stuff we've got in our gardens, you know, shrub prunings, you know, even and seven centimetres, you know, it's significant, um, can just be spread straight onto the soil if you want or, or added as a mulch, even on quite... Um, shallow growing stuff. 
potentially removes the need to, to go away and compost and bring it back and I'm all for reducing labour in my garden. A few times I have to move stuff around the better. It, so wood chip can work really well in no-dig systems. This is in Scotland uh, and this is Raymill wood chip um, which is why they've been able to put it down fresh. It, uh, the advantage of it compared to other compost is that it lasts a bit longer. So because the wood fibres are more complex and slower to break down, it, uh, it gives a longer lasting protection and, and compost than something like green waste compost or mushroom compost, which breaks down much more quickly. Um, the, there have been some, uh, some comments about potentially uh, problems with wood lice when you use it, and some people worry about increased slugs. I haven't noticed more slugs than other systems. I mean, the same doesn't get rid of slugs, um, but I don't think it, it mostly hasn't caused more of a problem of slugs than other things. But I know some people have reported that, but I haven't seen that. But uh, you know, it's a very effective, um, it's a, an effective material. You know, and and again, you can mix it with other materials to to get the benefits of both. So it certainly works well in a no dig system. So uh, you're all desperate to know, I'm sure, where you can get hold of wood chip. Um, if we can't make your own, because most of us don't have big enough gardens to make enough wood chip. So you can buy it in these sort of 80 or 100 litre bags. Um, and for some people, I mean, as Linda was saying, if it's got to come through your front door, then probably this is your option. Uh, however, not surprisingly, it is the most expensive way of buying it. Um, it tends to be, from what I can gather, about sort of eight, ten pounds a bag. Um, you might, you know, you might be able to find it cheaper, or, or particularly if you can find a local supplier. Um, as the, the thing to make sure about, I um, mean, this one obviously says it's organically produced, but you know, the thing to be careful about is making sure that it is just from trees and that it doesn't have any old pallets or anything with paint on. Um, so I was talking to someone uh, at an event yesterday who's been trying to source, they've been buying ton bags, which I'll come on to, and every time they get it, they find some old bits of pallet in it. And so, you know, the risk there is it's been treated and you're introducing um, potentially harmful chemicals into your system. So you do really need to be, you know, I would be careful about where you get it. You need to know where it comes from um, because there is waste wood that, that is not suitable for growing. Oops, sorry. Uh, the next most economic way of getting it is in these ton bags. So there's quite a lot of companies will deliver a ton bag. As long as you've got, you know, a bit of a driveway that they can pop it on, then that's quite good. And you can always then, you know, bag it up yourself and shift it through. Uh, these seem to be 50 to 150 pounds for a ton bag, depending on the company and where you are. So significantly cheaper um, than buying it by the by the small sack, but still, you know, a cost. Some discussion as we were um, gathering at the start about tree surgeons. Uh, and in theory, uh, Tree surgeons often have to pay to get rid of their chips if they can't find someone that wants it. Um, they, in, in the UK, there's an organization called, or a website called Arb Talk. There's one in the States called Get Chip Drop, um, where you can register as a chip site. Um, so you can basically just go on, register yourself, even as a, you know, just a house as a tip site. You do need to have a driveway that's big enough to a pile of wood chip so you know it's not suitable for everybody uh, and if you're lucky and uh, there's tree surgeons nearby and sometimes it, it might not be that the tree surgeon has to be right next by it might be that they're doing a job next door to you and they don't want to drive off with it so it's not particularly reliable um, but you might you know you might get lucky uh, what I have noticed actually even in the last year is more reports of people saying they can't get any free or they've, they've had to pay or um, and the other the other thing I heard again yesterday at this event was uh, in one or two areas uh, and I think Stroud was one of them uh, there's been reports of kind of uh, not reputable tree surgeons coming and casing your joints while they're tipping off 
the uh, the site. So just a slight word of warning if you do have sort of you know chainsaws or anything expensive around the front that they might nick. So I, it's a, I don't think it's a massive problem, but it is a potential risk. Um, the other potential source of uh, free wood chip is from power companies where they have to clear around um, the power lines. Uh, again, I think this is more common in the States, um, but it, I think there, there are occasions in the, in the UK as well. Usually you have to register with the power company directly. They, they sometimes, uh, some of them sort of offer it only to their customers. Some of them offer it to people in the local area. Um, but again, it takes a bit of detective work work it out and for those with big gardens or farms then obviously you can grow your own wood chip um, but for most gardeners that's not uh, not really an option in, in any quantity so I guess in summary I hope you're all now almost as uh, enthusiastic about wood chip as I am I'm not sure I'd recommend getting quite my level of obsession but um, I just, I, I'm just always amazed by how a tree will turn into this, basically. Because <laughs> of a tree, turn into that. Nature's amazing. Thank you all. And we do have, for those of you that are on Facebook, we do have a, a wood chip for soil health group on Facebook. Um, and there's quite a lot of, uh, sort of garden chat about on there as well it's sort of it's a mixture of farmers and gardeners so it's um it's yeah lots of interesting people on there right now i'm going to start there's been quite a few actually ben coming through on the business of um I, I think a lot of people hear stories about wood chip comes from diseased trees and therefore are you bringing disease into your garden so whilst i'll scroll up to the top maybe you might like to say a few words about that yeah really good question and something that i was really nervous about when i started using it and i've become much less nervous about it as i've gone on um, and there's a few reasons for that. I mean, clearly a lot of wood chip does come from diseased trees, um, particularly if you're getting it from a tree surgeon, uh, because that's often the reason why the tree is coming down in the first place. However, most tree diseases don't uh, tend to affect healthy young trees. They tend to affect weak and slightly dying trees already. Uh, so often the tree disease, I mean, you obviously got things like ash dieback which is an exception but if you're looking at things like honey fungus for instance or some of those other ones they mostly won't sort of go in and attack really healthy vibrant trees uh, and so certainly for the for what we're using it for which is mostly around new trees and planting and establishing new trees i'm not really nervous at all um, secondly the infectious bit of the disease often is not in the wood chip it's often on the leaves um, and often it's floating around in the air anyway. Um, so, so by putting wood chip onto the soil, you're not necessarily increasing the risk of infection. If you are worried, then actually just composting it will get rid of most of that anyway. Um, so, so as the material breaks down and the biological diversity in the material increases, then the amount of infectious, if there is anything in the wood chip, will, will disappear. Um, so, so I'm not saying there's no risk, um, there clearly is some risk, but I would say in the grand scheme of things, I think the risk is pretty minimal. Okay, thank you. Uh, question after my own heart. Uh, you covered uh, composting wood chip but uh, how to accelerate the decomposition of, of wood chip into, into the soil? Or actually, can you uh, accelerate the, compo uh, the composting uh, uh, process? So we, we have, uh, I mean, there are compost starters. We, in the biodynamic world, there's one called the mouse door starter. I mean, how do I get it quickly, basically? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I have no idea whether the starters would be effective on wood chip. Um, I mean, I suspect they might be, but again, it depends. It depends whether they encourage bacterial growth or fungal growth. So if they're not encouraging fungal growth, they probably won't speed up rotting ah. of wood chip. 
Um, so one way to speed it up a little bit is to add some nitrogen to it. Um, so, you know, you don't, the, you don't need nitrogen to rot wood chip down, um, but you can speed it up a bit by adding some green material to it. Um, and probably the other way to speed it up is just to control it more. So things like the, the Johnson Sioux reactor where you, you're controlling and regulating the temperature to optimize fungal growth. Um, but you can also introduce specific aggressive fungi potentially. Um, so, I mean, I've grown King Strafaria in a ton bag of wood chip. Um, and I think it probably broke it down a little bit more quickly than some other fungi. Um, so that would probably be the, one of the effective ways, I guess. Okay, thank you. And just, and then this will be the last one on decomposition, so to speak, but this is interesting. How to recognize that wood chip is sufficiently decomposed to pass the stage that it can inhibit the germination and growth of seedlings and tender saplings. We have a lot of experienced gardeners. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, well, it's probably, it's probably just kind of, oh, that looks all right. Um, so, I mean, it's some of it is to do with the size of the chip that's left. Um, uh, some of it is to do whether it smells right. So if it smells like a forest, it's probably, you know, like that kind of those actomycetes, you know, that kind of lovely mm, smell, uh, then it's probably doing all right. If you're worried, then you can sieve it because you can just sieve the big bits out, put the big bits back on the heat and, and put the smaller stuff. Um, but, you know, usually within certainly within six months, I would say you'd probably be safe, but it does depend a little bit on the material and the size of the chips and the species of the chips. So, you know, willow will break down very quickly. Oak and hornbeam will break down much more slowly. Um, so there's, it's hard to be definitive about it. But. Okay. And what about, there's been a couple of questions on conifers and this whole business, do conifers turn your soil, make your soil more acidic? And, and there's one, I think we've answered this one from Volker, can one use any kind of wood or any particular ones? And I think you've just covered that. And then there's the fresh branches and the old wood and pine trees. Um, so on the, yeah, on the pH thing, because that is, that's quite a, a good question. The, and I think it's one of those myths again, you basically, it's pretty impossible to change the pH of your soil. Okay. Uh, and it's certainly, you're unlikely to do it with conifer. You might be able to change the pH of your pots, the soil, you know, the compost in your pots, because it's a relatively small amount of material, but soil has a pretty uh, strong neutralizing effect. So, you know, unless you're putting tons of the stuff on, you'd be unlikely to change the pH. And generally anything up to about 30% conifer material is fine. Um, I mean, if you've got more, then you just need to composite for longer, probably. It just slows down the composition a bit. Um, but, you know, often stuff from tree surgeons will be quite high in conifer because they land iron and all the rest of it they're taking down. But it seems to be that anything up to about 25, 30 percent is fine. Yeah. And stuff you buy in bags. I mean, I saw one that was spruce and. and uh... Yes. And so, again, I mean, uh, with things like spruce bark or spruce chips, they yeah. will they're almost deliberately designed to last longer. So, you know, they're selling themselves as a landscaping mulch, which is designed to last a long time. Um, so, so it does depend a little bit, you know, getting the right material for what you want to do is, is also sort of worth thinking about. Uh, one about climate change. Now, uh, uh, yeah. how much energy do we use to chip a ton of wood? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish like I mastermind, did. isn't it? <laughs> I know. I know. I know. We've, I've had this conversation with a few people um, about, you know, is it really sustainable? Um, <laughs> and clearly it does use energy. Um, I would love to see some more things. I don't have the answer to that, uh, is, the, is the honest truth. I, my instinct is that um, it doesn't use anything like as much energy as the benefit we get from it. Um, but clearly it would be better if we could have, uh, you know, solar panels or, you know, uh, you know, electric chippers on renewable energy. I mean, you've still got embedded energy clearly in the machine. Um, but, you know, there are a few things that I think we sh are worth safeguarding <clears throat> in terms of uh, technology and washing machines, chainsaws and wood chippers are my three. <laughs> <laughs> okay we'll get back to the practical stuff any plants that shouldn't be mulched with wood chip very good question uh, i don't think so i mean as i said i think it 
the shallow routers shouldn't be mulched with fresh wood chip, as I said before. But as I, I mean, I'm sure there are some instances where they won't do well. But you know, generally, most of my practical experience has been with trees. And certainly I can't, I haven't seen any negative effects using it on, on trees. Um, I suspect once you start getting into, uh, you know, annuals and smaller plants, you, you probably need to be a little bit more careful. But in general, I think, as, you know, if, if you're worried about a risk, then just compost it for a bit longer is my advice. Yeah. And this one crops up quite a lot as well. Uh, that There's clearly the impression out there that you need to keep, the mulch away from plant stems. Yeah, it, that's absolutely that right. Plant? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely right. There's that is I should have mentioned that with the disease thing actually. So, yeah, if you allow the chip to touch the stem, then you're effectively creating this sort of moist uh, area where if there is disease, it can travel across. So, so yeah, just keeping it away from the actual stem. Absolutely right. Yeah. Okay, and that would be the same for trees as well. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Although, you know, in my accidental experiment with the willows, they didn't seem to mind. Um, so I think, you know, willows might be the exception, but then they do root, you know, almost wherever you touch them. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right. From uh, Rachel Halliday here. Now she's getting all oh, right. You mentioned wood chip mulch. Wood chip mulch soil increases the water retention by up to 25%. Uh, she was wondering what the 25% compared with what? Uh, so compared with unmulched. Okay. So, or if, you know, if you're irrigating, then it will, you know, so in, in a commercial system, they did a trial where they were irrigating and it reduced the irrigation need by 25%. Okay. So it wasn't, which is the second part of Rachel's question. Um, have you got any observations compared with round well-rotted manure and garden com compost or well-rotted leaf litter which is because uh, most of us would use that wouldn't you in other words it, it, I think what where, where she's coming from is is wood chip a better uh, 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 a better substance for water retention than ones that we would normally use not necessarily no not necessarily but it, I guess what it does do is it's it's better at preventing the annual weeds from coming on so it's that com combination of benefits I guess but yeah now I would say a good compost will give the same um the same water retention and probably similar soil health benefits to wood chip yeah. um yeah um ah now would the wood chip help with tomato and potato blight and please say yes <laughs> that's oh, what we all man. want to know would wish yeah because you, you know you were talking about it how there, there was uh, uh, it helped in the case of box blight yeah i mean i guess is is the the blight is probably not coming from splash uh i mean sometimes it can if it's outdoor um but mostly they'll be grown indoors it might help on potatoes um, but the other interesting thing, so I remember James Wong talking about spraying his tomatoes with salicylic acid and it uh, it increases the sweetness of the tomato. So mm -hmm. I reckon uh, you could probably put your willow wood chip mulch on it and it might stimulate them to be more resistant to blight. It's I possible. It. I'm making no claims. Yeah. <laughs> but anyone up for experimenting next year? Yeah. I'd love to hear back if anyone does try. Yeah. Um, do fungi have a preference for softwood or hardwood wood chip? Right. So again, I'm probably quite quickly straying out of my area of expertise, but um, there are some fungi that particularly favour certain species of wood. I mean, some are very specific. They will only um, grow on one species of wood. Um, generally fungi will grow on most species and they tend to just rot down the softer ones quicker uh, is my understanding but um, I am by no means an expert on it. Okay are you okay and is everybody okay for another five minutes because we've got a few more really interesting questions. I'm quite happy to carry on. Good uh, this is not for you but to Simon Allen uh, yes we can give you a contact for Fred at Tetbury not not a not a problem <laughs> he's a great gardener and, and and honestly produces fab veg as well he's amazing yeah 
from Jane Carr. Uh, could she mulch her potatoes with RWC, that's Ramiel wood chip, instead of earthing up? That's an interesting one. I would have, yeah, I would have thought so. Um, I mean, earthing, my, my understanding from the research is that earthing up doesn't really increase yield. Um, so this sort of idea that you sort of gradually build it up and it, it gives you more potatoes, um, it's more about weed control. Uh, in which case, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to do it with Raymond Woodchip. Mm. Um, so I would be interested to, again, if someone does experiment with that, I'd be very interested to hear. We're getting lots of experiments, everyone. Um, any issues on using a wood chip on an asparagus bed? No, I think some people have used that and, and it works. I mean, asparagus is obviously, as we all know, notoriously difficult to keep weed free. Um, but uh, wood chip, I think, is, is, is probably as good a mulch as any and possibly a little bit better than um, than compost again just because it's it's harder for weed seeds to germinate but again it's the perennial weeds often that are a problem in asparagus which it wouldn't help against but yeah i mean it would work up to a point I'm, i don't think it would solve all your asparagus weeding problems ah but if you grow them on deep beds i used to find i mean it, it, you know weeding is, is never a problem yeah. in a deep yeah. bed yeah sorry to chip in there chaps um uh yes from uh, to Jude, uh, as I've just mentioned, all this lot is being recorded on YouTube. She wants to know, can we have the slides in PDF or some form later? Because she's on a phone. Um, I think the YouTube would cover that, Jess. I'm pretty sure it will. Yeah, we've, we've, cap we've captured all the slides and Ben talking in the film, so. If she's able to go to YouTube and watch it, it should give her everything she needs. And we'll share the link afterwards as well when it's up. OK, uh, well, we've got some nice suggestions for how to get some free wood chip, which I won't. I'll just let everybody read, read that lot. Um, yes. Hold on. Another question about pine stroke conifer wood chips and pH and general soil health, especially in, hort in a horticultural uh, setting. I think you've covered that, Ben, but you might want to just... Um... I, would, I would say, yeah, I mean, I would say with a lot of this stuff, it is all about balance. Um, you know, adding huge quantities of anything to your soil is, is probably not a great idea. Um, and I, you know, I see quite often this as a, uh, the use of wood chip often as a phase in a, in a, in establishing a growing system so you know with trees I, i'm not going to mulch a tree for the whole of its life i'm going to mulch a tree for the first three or four years to establish it um or you know if it's a raised bed uh you know or a no dig bed i'm going to probably put quite a lot on at the start but once it's established it only needs a sprinkle and so once you get to that smaller amount of material then the potential risk of any of those negative effects lessens anyway um, so, you know, clearly, as soon as you add anything, uh, there's a risk of something happening that you don't want as, as long as the good stuff that happens. My, my experience so far with wood chip is that the, the good outweighs the bad, you know, almost always. But, but of course, you know, there is, there's always a risk if you put the wrong thing in the wrong place or use too much of it. No? Uh, we're obviously all all obsessed with disease here, myself included. So, is wood chip from poisonous trees such as you a problem? Uh, again, I, as far as I can see, and I, you know, there isn't a study looking at every tree and every compound, um, but there are risks associated with certain trees, and uh, particularly if you're combining them with livestock you know so if you're using tree wood chip as a bedding mulch for instance you've got to be a little bit careful with some species when the wood chip's fresh but it does seem that within six months pretty much any of the potentially harmful chemicals have broken down um, and so so if you're at all worried about a species that might be a risk then just compost it and it'll be fine I think that's the short answer um I have a private, well, I, 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 uh, um, I have a private question here. But anyway, Lawrence Hills did recommend peeing on the compost box, which I think quite a lot of us 
I think it's called night soil, if I remember. Well, anyway, yes, we, I think quite a lot of us do that. Would that help speed up the decomposition of wood chip compost? It would, yeah, because it's a source of nitrogen, effectively. So, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And sorry for sharing that to whoever sent it to me privately, but it was quite interesting. And you have already covered that if you're using conifer chips, you don't feel that it necessarily raises, uh, raises the pH of the soil. So someone just missed okay. that one. Yeah. Um, other than walnut and willow, are there any other trees with superior wood chip, which is better for veg? Good one. Well, I don't know is the short answer because those are the ones that I've found out about. I think there might well be, um, but the research I don't think has been done. Um, so, so I would love to see more research into single species wood chip and the potential effects. Yeah. Ah, well, Lucy from New Forest Aquaponics, thank you for joining us, Lucy, said that they did a potato experiment this year and the wood chip worked brilliantly. And also, Lucy, a bit further on, a bit further out, she says that they grow trees in pure wood chip and they love it, but they do water with aquaponic water. I, I have no idea what aquaponic water is, but I'm sure it's very organic. Right. Um, right. Uh, oh, quite nice. Any info on mulching grapevines in use or use in vineyards? uh not specifically no i mean the 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 challenge once you get to kind of bigger scale is getting enough of the material and spreading it in a economical way so um but yeah i mean there's no reason why it won't benefit vineyards as far as i can see i mean we've got a few vines at the farm that we've been mulching and it seems to have done them good but um but i don't have anything specific on it okay <clears throat> now what minerals are in wood chips? Don't worry, Ben, we are finally coming to the end. Fascinating questions. Yeah, does, does wood chip have any minerals in? Well, it, I mean, clearly it has a lot of carbon. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, it, but it does have other minerals. And in a way, this is where the ramial wood chip comes in, because a lot of those other minerals are concentrated in the leaves and the bark, not in the heartwood. Um, so that's why the ramial wood chip is particularly good, is because it's got a much higher concentration of those other nutrients. Okay. Um, now I've lost the thread, but there is a question here. Does that mean mulching an old apple tree is unadvisable? And forgive me, Suzanne, I kind of lost the thread on that one. It's, I would say it's not that it's unadvisable, it's just it's less likely to have a benefit. Um, so, I mean, it will benefit the soil probably, but if it's a really old, I mean, I guess it depends on the situation. If the old apple tree is neglected and the soil is a bit compacted and all the rest of it, then it might well have a benefit, um, but it won't have the same impact that mulching a newly planted tree will have. Um, so, yeah, it's, I mean, it's not going to do any harm, um, but, you, might, you know, is it worth the effort, I guess? You know, if you happen to have some, mulch, some wood chip to get rid of, then stick it around a tree, but don't necessarily go out and buy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, any more studies into the aspergillosis spores and human health, however you say that? As yes, I, I actually thank you for that one because I did mean to mention that when I was talking about composting. There is a risk of breathing in the spores when you're turning wood chip compost. Um, and, and there have been instances of people having some nasty lung problems. So, uh, Basically, if you, I mean, you don't need to turn it, so that would probably be the easiest way to avoid it. But if you do turn it, then it's probably advisable to wear a mask when you're doing so. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Verity, for raising the question. Oh, this is the, oh, hold on. I've lost it. No, no, no. Oh, we've got more coming. Okay. Now, there was somebody here. Yes. How would you recommend preparing a vegetable garden bed using wood chip? This is starting with poor quality soil, and that's me. So, <laughs> I mean, it depends, depends a little bit, but, but the the easiest way, and again, sort of coming back to my lazy gardening um, approach, the easiest way is not to dig it. Um, I mean, unless you've got really bad and uh, significant compaction to quite a depth in the soil, 
the easiest way is to put some newspaper or cardboard down, uh, potentially to put a bit of compost down, which again, just sort of gives a bit of, because the wood chip might not be quite so biologically active. So having a little bit of compost might speed that up and then a layer of wood chip on top and then leave it. So ideally, if, if you can do that now um, and then give it four or five months, you should find come the spring that you can just sort of dig into it and plant or, or sow. Okay, um, I'll let you know, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, there's only one more question and then uh, a, a couple of comments on people's experiences with wood chip. So <clears throat> if planting hedging plants and young bare root trees now and not having composted chip until late summer, would it still be beneficial to the plants? It would, but you've got quite a risky period coming up. Um, so, so when we, I mean, if you're planting now, it's definitely better than planting in February. Uh, so what we noticed where we didn't manage to mulch some of our trees is the ones that went in by January mostly survived. The ones that had a mulch pretty much all survived. The ones that didn't have a mulch and went in in February or March, early March, mostly didn't survive. So basically the risk you've got in a dry spring is that's when they're most vulnerable. So if you're putting them in now with no, I mean, it depends as, as well if you're able to water them. Um, so if you've got access to water, that can mitigate. Um, <clears throat> but I aim to get the mulch down by the end of March, if possible. Um, but if that's not possible, it is still better to put it down in the summer. It will still, you know, it will still benefit and, and, and do good, but the sooner the better. Thank you. 